What is up, you guys? I wanted to share a knife that I found kicking around in my drawer. One of the first legitimate pocket knives that I bought as a teenager that I just still have to this day. And I just thought it was so cool. I still think it's cool. This is called the Hunter, okay? It's a 440 stainless steel blade made in Taiwan. Let me see if I can get all up in this thing. Look at the wear and tear. You can tell I use this thing many, many moons. It's just the, the, the edge is torn up. I need to give some, some love to this. Maybe a little bit of reprofiling, clean the tape residue off of it. But it's got a partially serrated blade. It's got a Warncliffe style blade, actually. Like a reverse Tonto. Same type of blade that, you know, those um, the, the Benchmades uh, use a lot on the Osborne model and... The thing that was special about this knife, it's a manual flipper if you want it to be, okay? So, it's, you know, dual thumb studs. No, it's actually not a flipper. It's it's a standard manual action knife. Or is it? Or is it? You notice these little shapes right here? This one's got a little bit of a cutout. Hmm, I wonder why. This one's solid, Okay encasement here you've got a two-piece scale construction made out of aluminum obviously it's seen better days you got some chippage going on you know all the anodized black coating is starting to chip off but it's kind of cool how they put the you know the backspacer built into one half of the scales um i'm working with this chest mount today so i don't know how well this is going to work out but i just figured hey let's throw the Camera on the chest mount, and maybe this will be a lot easier. Oh, and by the way, yeah, some more vintage things from the 90s. Star Wars Micro Machines. How could you go wrong with, you know, taking a little blast from the past? These are little play sets. It came with a little micro, micro machine figure. This isn't the original one from this one, but still really cool. All right. So besides the point, I'm getting distracted here. This is this knife was one of the original knives why I started having a love for pocket knife collecting. Okay, did you see what just happened? There's a hidden button in the handle. So yeah, it's an automatic, but it's got the little hidden button. How cool is that? I mean, what's what's also cool is if anybody ever asks you, hey, is that an auto? No, it's not. Look, it's just a manual. Okay. What's what's going on in there is there's a a torsion rod, okay, like a leaf spring, and when you close the blade, that pushes the torsion leaf spring, you know, and, and it cocks it. So if I want to show you how to dry fire this, you just you can hear it. You can hear the the little rod inside. See how you can see it's sticking up a little bit further. So what the the tang on the 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 blade tang basically does is pushes it down until it hits the lock point, and then it captures it right there. But how cool is that? I, I wish I could find these still in production somewhere. I don't think they're made. I don't. I haven't seen anything similarly made in at least the last 10 years, any of the markets, anywhere. But if anybody has had this knife, I hope you didn't lose it. I hope you didn't give it away. This is one of those knives that if you get one, you just don't want to get rid of it. It's just so freaking cool. It's got a beautiful design to it, but and it's not really super heavy because these scales are made out of, you know, chunks of aluminum. I mean, it's, I don't even, I'm not even sure. No, there's not even any stainless steel liners in the inside. The liner lock is actually held on by a, a screw. They played, they, they stuck a stinking piece of stainless steel and there's a hole right in here with a screw holding the liner lock to the the chunk of aluminum. So, I mean, the design is a little weird, a little wonky, but it just works. And, I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding that it's, it's held up all these years. I mean, I've had this since I was, like, probably 18, I'm guessing. Maybe a little younger, maybe 17. I know I ordered it off of eBay. And, uh, yeah, back in the day, eBay didn't even allow blades of certain lengths. So, I think they described this knife as having a one-inch blade. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm just going to order it anyway because I know that's a lie. So I ordered it. And, of course, this is what showed up. This is the right knife. 
I think my friends uh, ordered a few as well. You know, it came in a variety of colors. I don't know what factory made these. They're just unbranded, made in Taiwan. Taiwan is is usually, you know, the better quality end of of uh, Chinese knives, especially in the 90s. You know, the, the China stuff was still up and coming. You know, the China stuff now is is comparable to the way the quality is of these Taiwan knives back in the 90s. You know, it's it's come a long, long way. There's so many American companies using China uh, to, you know, produce because the quality is just sometimes exceeding the quality of even American shops. And it, it, it that's a whole other discussion in itself. But it's it's just crazy how this thing just, just held up, you know. And I used to take this thing to work with me and cut boxes. I worked at a grocery store and... Uh, it was just fun. You just got a nice little surprise, a little kick out of people. You know, you pull it out and you hit the button and, oh, you got a switchblade. That's really cool. You know, it's a side opening dual. It, it, this would be considered like a, a double action or a dual action knife because you can open it manually. But if you, you're the only reason why you'd, you'd hear the, the, the dry fire is if you accidentally pushed it while it was open but i have had i gotta say when you let the the knife blade kind of get out of adjustment if you let the you know if you don't thread lock this main pivot screw which i never did i always just kind of retorked it when it got loose but if it was a little too loose this thing would get a little squirrely in your pants pocket there was a few times that it popped open on me in my pocket but still for the novelty item that it is and you know how cool it is. I still, I'm never going to sell this knife. I love it. It's one of my first, uh, I'm not a very nostalgic or a very uh, sentimental person with objects. I'm usually not married to anything, you know, when it comes to, you know, material goods and, you know, stuff comes and goes, especially in this business. If you sell knives for a living, you can't, you can't keep everything. But because this was the first knife that I bought when I was not in business selling knives, this is one of these knives that I'm never getting rid of. And I just, I still love it to this day. If anybody knows of a knife that's similar to this, that's still in production anywhere, I don't care what brand it is, let us know in the comment section. Or do you have one of these? If you've got one of these, let us know. Do you have a video of it? Link us in the, in the comments. I don't care. I just, I just wanted, I didn't really find anything about these when I was searching online uh, recently. Uh, I couldn't find anybody talking about them i don't it's just called the hunter 440 stainless hunter made in taiwan um i'm sure my buddy jay over at you know lightning out the front knives has, has had one of these or seen them he's been in the knife game for for a long time you know check him out if you're into automatics uh things like uh, knives like that uh, otfs um i don't think my buddy jeff at slash the gash has ever had one of these um i could be wrong Chime in, in the comments, Jeff. I don't know you're going to see this video eventually. But um, the only improvement it could have, you know, for my personal liking is if the, the clip was a tip-up carry. It's got the lanyard hole. I don't care about that. I'm never going to put a paracord on my knives. That's just not me. You know, a lot of people do. A lot of people like it. No, I'm good. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, hopefully you didn't sit here and babble too long, but... If you're looking for one of these, I'm sure you might be able to find one popping up here and there on an on a online website such as, you know, eBay or even though it's, they're not allowed on eBay. I'm sure people still once in a while pop them up there. Maybe set a saved search for Hunter Taiwan. And if, if somebody lists one, you're going to actually know what it is, you know, as long as the func it's still functional and it's still got the, the leaf spring inside. Maybe you can cop one of these for yourself, but... Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this and have a great rest of your day.